This is the last problem from the mini-series where we look at the shear force and the bending moment diagrams for a beam on which there's a point load and a point moment in this case. And again, this is the kind of problem that you could get as a first year engineering student. So if you'd like to see anything similar to this on the channel or if you have any questions whatsoever, let me know in the comments. So. In this example, I would, as usual, just draw the free body diagram and then I would add all the um, forces and in this case, that external moment as well. So we have a reaction at A. Now, A is a simple support, so there should be a horizontal reaction force as well, but there's no other external horizontal force, which means that there isn't really a horizontal reaction at A either. Uh, the other thing is at point B we have this vertical reaction force as well. So B has a roller support which only provides a vertical reaction force. And the other thing is uh, the point load in the middle which is 4 kilonewtons. And then we have this uh, 12 kilonewton meters a point moment at A. And that's pretty much everything uh, we have. We also know that the length of the beam is 6 meters and the point load is acting in the center. Like that. So let's try to first find the reaction forces. So first of all I'll write that the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to 0 where uh, up is positive, so we have Ra uh, plus Rb minus 4 is equal to 0, so Ra plus Rb is equal to 4. So that's the first equation, but we need something else, and of course I'm going to use the fact that the beam doesn't actually rotate. So we have that the sum of moments uh, about any point is equal to 0, and if we can choose any point, I'll just choose point A. So, let's choose point A like this. So, let's see what moments we have about point A. First of all, there's that point moment, which is uh, minus 12, because it's clockwise. Uh, RA doesn't produce any moment. Then, we have the moment due to the point load, which is clockwise again. So, that's 4, which is the force, times 3 which is the moment arm, and then we have the moment due to Rb at the other end, which is counterclockwise, so that's plus Rb times the moment arm, which is 6. Just like that, so we have 6Rb is going to equal 12 plus 12, which is 24, so Rb is 4 kilonewtons. So Rb is 4 kilonewtons, and Ra is uh, 4 minus Rb, which is 4 minus 4, which is equal to 0 kilonewtons, which is very interesting. So this basically tells us that although we have two supports, due to the nature of the loading uh, of the beam, there is no reaction at A. So there's no uh, sort of like stress applied to the support and there's no there's no force that the support exerts on the beam either. So the only, uh, the only force, the only reaction force is at B, which is 4 kilonewtons. So B actually takes the entire uh, load of 4 kilonewtons. So that's what we have. Um, and then I would just try to find the shear force and the bending moment diagrams by looking at the two halves of the beam. So in this case, we have a discontinuity in the middle, which means that I'm going to first look on the first half, and then I'm going to consider the second half. So for this one and this two. So in the first instance, I'm going to take my random, not really random, but my variable x as being between um, 0 and 3. Right, so I'm not really including 3 in this case. And then here's how I'll do that. So I'll draw the free body diagram like this. 
So I'm just taking some length of the beam. So I'm just doing a cut here like that. And then I know there's a reaction force at A, but that reaction force is zero. So I'm not really going to draw it, but I will draw the moment, which is 12 kilonewton meters. And then the other thing is the shear force and the bending moment, like that. Okay, so between zero and three, uh, we actually have that the shear force is equal to zero because there's no other vertical force acting, there's no reaction force. Normally, I would have to draw this reaction force like that, but we know that's equal to zero, so uh, I won't bother with it. Uh, and the other thing is the bending moment itself. So we can say that the sum of moments about, let's say, point P is zero, where, as usual, point P is on the cut. Counterclockwise is positive, so we have M, which is positive. We have the 12, which is negative, is equal to zero. So the bending moment is 12 kilonewton meters. So that's, that's what the bending moment is for the first half of the beam. And the only thing left to do is to do the same thing, but for the second half. So in this case, I'm going to take x between 6 and 3, like this. So the free body diagram is going to look something like that. We have the beam. We have the point load somewhere here. So now I'm doing my cut uh, somewhere like that. So I'm considering uh, the beam from this point to this point, and I'm calling that length x, basically. Right, so we have, uh, again, I'll just draw this anyway, just for the sake of it. And then we have our external moment, which is 12 kilonewton meters. And then we've got our shear force and the bending moment like this. And I think this was 4 kilonewtons. Okay, so we know the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to 0. Upwards is positive, so we have just two forces. We have minus 4 and minus s. So we have s is equal to minus 4 kilonewtons. Like that. So we have a shear force of 0 for the first half, and then we have a jump to minus 4 for the second half. And then for the bending moment, I'll do the same thing as usual, which is sum of moments um, about point P, where point P is here, is equal to zero. So we've got, first of all, we have the bending moment. Then we have minus 12, which is the moment at the opposite end. And then we have the moment due to the external force. So we know this is three. We know this is 3. We know the whole thing is x, which means that the moment arm of that 4 kilonewton force is just x minus 3. So we have m minus 12, and then we have plus, because that 4 kilonewton force produces a counterclockwise moment. So that's 4 times x minus 3, and that's equal to 0. So if I rearrange, or if I expand the brackets first, I have m minus 12, and then plus 4x, and then minus 12 again, is equal to 0. So the moment as a function of x is 24 minus 4x. So that's it. Now let's plot the shear force diagram first. So we have this. We have uh, shear force in kilonewtons. This should be kilonewton meters as well. And then we have x on the horizontal axis, measured in meters. And I'll draw, so we have 3 here, or let me start, just put it here. And then we have 6 here. So the shear force is, remember, it's 0 until the halfway point. Yeah, so it's 0 until the halfway point, like this. And then it jumps to minus 4. So minus 4 is on the y-axis, uh, somewhere here, let's say. Let's put it here. So minus 4. So it jumps 
to this point until 6 and that's it. Okay, I can draw some more dotted lines just to show you that there's a jump and that's it. So the shear force is a piecewise step function basically and the bending moment is going to look um, well I wouldn't say similar because at first it's a constant function and then you've got a linear function with a gradient with a non-zero gradient so we have the moment in kilonewton meters and we have the first piece until uh, three so we have three here and then we have six over here so let's see for the first half we've got a moment of 12 right so there is a value of 12 which is again not going to be to scale or anything but we have 12 here so the moment let's choose red for this is just a horizontal line like this and then for the second half we've got 24 minus 4x so let me write that here so we have the moment for the second half is 24 minus 4x so let's find what values we have at x equals 3 or, or as x approaches 3 and at x is equal to 6 so at uh, 3 we have 24 minus 12 which is 12 kilonewton meters so uh, the function is continuous, uh, but it's not smooth because m of 6 is going to be 24 minus 24, which is 0 uh, kilonewton meters, which makes sense because at the right end, you know, there's a roller and rollers don't provide any moment, any reactive moment. So uh, we have a straight line which goes from 12 and it descends at 6 and that's it so again it's a continuous function but it's not smooth and that's it that's the bending moment diagram and that's the shear force diagram and that's the end of the question